the FG's whistleblowing policy is our focus this morning and Ebon Oluadigbarua is here with us. He thinks the government uh, is about some diversionary tactics. Uh, let's quickly delve in and look at some of the issues you thought that uh, by now the government should be uh, highlighting instead of uh, the whistleblowing policy. Well, as I sit here, you just, if you, f if you finish now, take a trip to Ikeja the Mursala Mohammed International Airport and see the crisis that our people are in at this period in trying to travel and trying to go home either within Nigeria or outside Nigeria. And then you go to Ojota and see the crisis in terms of traveling on the roads. Yesterday, the federal government admitted through the Federal Road Safety Commission that they were worried with the uh, number of lives lost on the Lagos Ibada Expressway due to the uh, state of that road. So you expect that at this time the priority of any government will be how to address the commotion uh, following the desire for people to travel either today or in the period uh, coming with the holidays. And so you want to close a year and then bring this kind of fake or misapplied hope to say for people who are not being paid salary to expect that if they supply information concerning somebody, then they can get paid. And I just give you an example. Assuming you are the informant on the case of the former governor of Abia State, uh, Mr. Oji Uzokalu, and you gave information, that's close to about 12 years ago. The case has gone to the Supreme Court and is back in the trial court. Trial has just started. Objections are being raised again. So what would be the fate of that informant? Because the promise of uh, payment is based on the success of the information you have given when the person has been convicted and the money has been recovered. So how do you deceive people? Are, are, we, are we illiterate in this country that people just go on television and be telling us cook and boo stories about uh, and, and driving up people's hope to think that there is some new revenue for them in giving information? And when surely the Minister of Finance has no capacity to convict any person, any information you give will be subjected to the regular uh, investigation and the person will be jacked to court and then there will be a conviction. If after that conviction he doesn't appeal against it and the government successfully recovers the money, it's when you get your money. And then uh, Suleiman, take a look at what has happened to the Abacha family in terms of recovery of loot. As we are here sitting today, government is still trying to recover money from Switzerland and so those other countries. Assuming you were the one that gave the information, what will have been your fate since 1994? So I think that we should get ourselves concerned about what are we doing to get the price of exchange rate, the cost of exchange rate to get down. I slept in darkness throughout yesterday. There was no electricity supply. We'll, what is the government doing we'll, about we'll that? Take, we'll explore that uh, further. We'll, we'll go to Abuja. But, but, but before we do that, don't forget that uh, the Lagos Ibadan Express, where you highlighted, is uh, getting the, most, the best of attention in uh, recent times now. And many will say uh, that's a fantastic job the government is doing on that one because you just also mentioned the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Uh, let's bring uh, Markwe on. Markwe. Oh, Mr. Adeboroa, some people will say that there is a world of difference between what is now, what is an act or a bill and what is a policy of government. Uh, there is supposed to be a place for the policy or executive order of government. Don't you think that this particular uh, policy can be a stopgap measure pending when a law is eventually enacted? As I speak to you, you are entitled to walk into the office of the Inspector General of Police in Abuja and submit a petition. You can do so to any DPO or any police station all around the country. When you consider the re level of illiteracy in this country, and you're asking people from the hinterland to log into a portal, where do they have so access to such? You are even hindering the process of investigation. Because if we are to follow this, it can only be successful in the cities. It can only be an elitist program. I mean, this can only happen when somebody has, first of all, access to internet and the person must be literate. So what about people in the local areas? And corruption is everywhere, especially in the local governments. So if you want to execute any policy, first of all, it must be legal. 
And I'm saying that what the Minister of Finance, with due respect, has reeled, reeled out in the course of her press briefing are all illegalities. There's no, you, you, there's you no know, way we know, can enforce know, that. When we talk about illegalities, and uh, we'll try to put that side by side with what is happening to the agency that is also that has also been helping uh, in the fight against corruption, that's the EFCC. The headship or the chairmanship of that uh, agency has been... Uh, in the news lately and uh, you also came up with a press release asking for the status of uh, Mr. Magu. What's your reading of uh, developments concerning uh, that uh, uh, very, very uh, big news which uh, we saw uh, in the Senate uh, on that day? I think it's clear to us now that from December 15, 2016, Mr. Ibrahim Mustafa Magu has ceased to be the head of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, whether in active, acting or substantive capacity. Because in immediately the president forwarded his name to the Senate for confirmation that has activated Section 2 of the EFCC Act, which says that the appointment of a chairman shall be subject to confirmation by the Senate. It was within the prerogative of the president to allow him to be acting for the four years mm. of his tenure. Nobody would have questioned it. He could have acted for as long as the president wanted. But the moment the president transmitted a letter forwarding his name to the Senate, Section 2 has been activated. Subject to means dependent on. It's, it's, it's contingent upon confirmation. And once the Senate transmits back any document to the president declining that confirmation, it will be impossible for Mr. Magu to go back to the EFCC and still occupy a seat because he'll be doing so illegally. Because he cannot be acting when a confirmation for a substantive appointment has been rejected. So what should Mr. Magu have done? There's nothing to do. If by now he should be at home or seek redeployment to another department in the police. He's a policeman. But he was a, he was a president. They'll put him in, a, in acting capacity. If the president has not made a, st a categorical statement about him and the confirmation or non-confirmation by the Senate, how do you expect Mr. Magu to just walk away? That's what I'm saying. The acting capacity of Mr. Magu terminated on the 15th when the Senate declined confirmation of his appointment as a substantive chairman. Uh, he uh, cannot uh, thereafter proceed to be acting in that capacity when the substantive thing has been denied. Because the acting means that I'm standing in place until I'm confirmed and you are sent for confirmation and the confirmation was denied. You will not be acting in respect of a matter in which your substantive capacity has been denied. So I think that what should happen, and that's why we didn't want anybody to play on us, you know, I mean, and say we don't know his status. So we have written to the Attorney General for him because the EFCC is, on, is an agency under the office of the Honorable Attorney General. And we have written to the Senate so that we can confirm the status who is heading the EFCC. Because so, it, will be, it will be anachronistic for us to be using Magu unofficially to be heading the agency when his appointment has been denied. Okay, I, I believe Malpe has a question. Malpe? Well, I want to focus more on the whistleblowing policy of the federal government uh, because, Ms. Mr. Deborah, you're talking about uh, something having legal backing, uh, which a lot of people will agree with you, but then there's also room for government policy. What the federal government said they were announcing was the launch of a portal whereby people can report uh, certain types of corruption.